Good morning, church. We honor the set man, Apostle Tony Rapu, even in absentia. Can we celebrate himself and my darling Mrs. R? Thank you. You can do better than that. Hallelujah. I celebrate Pastor Jude, ably supported by Dr. Fage and the amazing, amazing pastoral team in this present house. Can we celebrate our leaders in this present house? This is not going to be a forming Sunday. Thank you. I think I'll just face you because I was like, God will give me my person. Uh -huh. Because you know, lucky people used to like to form. Mm. Though we know where lucky ends, but we end it there. I, remember, I see that they removed that fish because that fish was a definite marker that you have entered Cameroon. Was, <laughs> I'm not here alone. I'm here with quite a few of my mentees. There's so many. And so many people have moved to this church. I keep saying, you don't have to come to my church, but they don't listen. So I just look back and I see this one too has moved, including her mother and her husband. <laughs> so shall we celebrate those from Awesome Treasures who are here and online? Thank you very much. Now celebrate yourself. You need to celebrate yourself. Because if there's anything I hate, I don't talk to chairs. So because of you, I'm not talking to chairs today. See, the worst thing that can ever happen to you is come to the house of God and expect just another Sunday. You are disenfranchising yourself. The Bible says that we have come to Mount Zion, to the city of the living God, to the innumerable company of angels, to the spirit of just men made perfect, to Jesus who is the author of the new covenant. You know the reason why you don't expect to experience a shift in church when you come? You don't expect it. I believe when I come to this church, and I know my seat somewhere at the back near the front, somewhere there, they're missing me there today. The Bible says they go from strength to strength. All of them appear before the Lord in Zion. Even if I have an ailment and I show up in church, I know it must leave. You don't get it. I believe that we carry something because we're portals of the living God. Everybody is a temple of the Holy Spirit. There's nothing that can be worse than for you to turn the presence of God into familiar. Do you get? Some people are still looking, you know. <laughs> Holy Spirit, we thank you for this morning. In the presence of God, there is fullness of joy. At the right hand of God, there are pleasures forevermore. Choir, you follow me. I don't follow you. <laughs> Thank you, Spirit of the living God, for being here with us. We give you praise, Lord God. We thank you for what you are about to do in our lives. We thank you because one eye is too much for you to sort us out. No. <laughs> thank you. In Jesus' name, we pray. Promise number one, I don't overstay my time. So don't be distracted for any reason. Focus. One of the hugest enemies of the believer is distraction. I want to thank those in this church who journeyed all the way with us to Abuja. I celebrate you one more time. You know yourself. I don't want to mention your names. Thank you. Today, we're talking about sustaining faith. And if I was to give you the subtitle, I'll say kings and priests, masters of the earth. The Lord asked me, said, bring to them a mystery. Don't forget that the Bible says we should be encountered. Servants of the living God, Antifumi. <laughs> and stewards of the mystery of God. The mysteries of God. There are certain ciphers that if you don't know, your life will suffer for it. Mm. There are certain things encoded into God's word that if you don't break into, it will show that there is a gap. We cannot know all of God. But there's certain doctrines that have been hidden for this end time that God is bringing us back into those truths. So like I said, today you must pay attention. Today is not the day of, well, they told me to come for baby dedication and I came with them. I'm going to be taking us through a journey of what God meant for us as kings and priests on the earth. 
Then we'll move into Jesus exemplifying that. And we're going to end up with we demonstrating that before we leave. Is that clear? Richard. You will not suffer my food to be moved. I carry your presence everywhere. Who am I? Your mind is so full of me. Mortal man, awesome God. Mortal man, awesome God. You will not suffer my food to be moved. I carry your presence everywhere. Who am I? Your mind is so full of me. Mortal man, awesome God. You know, I like being a woman. And I explain why. When the men look at me, they say, but she's just a woman. What can possibly happen? And then the women look and say, she's a woman like me. Let me tell you one thing, oh cool people of this present house. If I owe you nothing today, I owe you an encounter with God. Today is a day of revelation. When you enter into a revelation and understanding, you can't help it. You enter into an impartation. When you get an impartation, it is time for an activation. Enough of talking in the church. You need to go with something tangible that will change your life. If God be God, let us serve him. Whenever there is a call and I see young people especially coming out. With their heads hung low. Despairing. And I'm like, is there no bomb in Gilead? I am too sure of the God that I serve. He changes stories. He has what it takes. I empathize with young people because of the days of social media. Your source of truth. It's such a problem because everybody claims to have the truth. You don't know the difference between a prophet and a motivational speaker. Rabba Sata. Likeri Mandele Basata. Ebaraba Katakata. The Bible says in Genesis chapter 1 verse 1. In the beginning God himself created the heavens and the earth. Then this heavens and the earth that he created was now without form and void. Therefore you are not the first person to have something good turn bad. It happened even to God. But God did not despair. He did not say, look at what my life has become. I thought this marriage was going to work. Look at where I am. I thought this business was going to look, work. Look at where I am. I did not know this child could run into this difficulty. I give up. It must be that there is no power. It must be there is no help. He did not look at the doctor's report and say it is over. He did not say it is at an end. Young people, are there any young people here? I know you should be in another church, but are you here? Because you sleep in here, so I know you are here. If you are a young person here, can I hear it? Hallelujah! We're warming up. There is hope! Everything you saw in the profile, that's why I allow it to play. There is no secret. There is no man anywhere. There is no boyfriend. There is no Aristo. The only secret I have is what I'm giving to you today. I was a young person in this same Nigeria in the days of Babangida. My salary was 630 naira. Please don't, it wasn't $630, it was Naira. The rate too was not so fantastic. In this, my one life, I have seen the Naira go from one Naira to $1.20 when my parents would take me to America to what it is today and I'm still standing. You don't get it. You will not suffer this feet to be moved. I carry your presence everywhere. Who am I? Your mind is so full of me, mortal man, awesome God. Pastor Nia, I have a feeling that when that Naira rate first changed on me, God did not say to Gabriel, Gabriel, what do we do? Jumoke is in Nigeria. We never thought the rate could change. Will she ever buy a car? Will she build houses? I thank God who knows the end from the beginning and from ancient times and things not yet done. Who has gone ahead of us to provide for us? Who is not moved by anything that moves the earth? You don't understand. 
I want to de demonstrate to you that though you think what was good became bad, God is prepared for it. Then he looked and he said, let there be light. Because what he created in verse 2, the earth became without form and void. Darkness was upon the face of the deep. I mean, this description, may your life never be described this badly. I don't know anybody whose womb is a sort. I've heard my mentees being told by a doctor that their womb is a war zone. Still, yeah, you know, some doctors can talk anyhow. Yeah. Still, he did not stop God from doing what he had to do. And those who are my witnesses are doing this because they know. We have seen people conceive without ovaries. People conceive without fallopian tubes. You don't understand. <laughs> oh my God. You know, what you know of God is what makes you audacious. I have no confidence in myself. Zero. Zero. I was born again at 11. My whole psyche is what God has made me. Not the profile. Do you understand? <laughs> you are my confidence. <laughs> God is my confidence. There's nothing else. He said, darkness was upon the face of the deep. And God said, let there be light. When he said, let there be light, he did not say, let there be luminaries. Because if he meant, let there be luminaries, luminaries came in Genesis chapter 1 verse 4. Right? Where he said, he made the sun, the moon. Aha. So when he said, let there be light, he was talking about something else. There are no repetitions, young people, in the word of God. Stop studying the word of God on the surface. If it's looking as if it's not adding up, you are the one missing something. If that motivational speaker speaks it, it's not gelling. It's because it's not gelling. Open your Bible yourself. You have apps I did not have. You have translations I don't have. Compare one translation to the other to the other until it begins to make sense. There's power in the word. <clears throat> Let there be light. In the original Hebrew, when you look at the meaning, Aleph, Yav, Resh, it means let there be that which firmly establishes man. Let there be order. God hates anarchy. I speak to that life this morning. Let there be order. Put your hands on your head and say, let there be order. You need to open your mouth and say something to yourself. There must be order. That career must receive order. That business must receive order. That womb must receive order. That marriage must receive, must receive order. Even if your children are not here and lives must receive order. And this womb carried them. You touch your umbilical cord and you say, except you are not fed from this womb. Except I did not dedicate you to God when you were born. You know, you can dedicate a house to God, then move away, then squatters move in. And then when you see their squatters, do you say, woe is me, for there are squatters. You move there and you serve an eviction notice. And if they make a mistake not to move, they look behind you and they see a belief. After the belief, they see armed police and they know that there is no choice. This morning, hey, 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 the 19th of May, everything that is illegal, that is living in your life, that is living in your destiny, knows that there's notice being served. Is beginning to pack the Lord. Because we say, bless the Lord, all you his saints, who hearken to the voice of his word, doing his command. I said, let there be order. Let there be order. If you allow the enemy, he will build a, a nest in your hair. He will go as far as you allow him. Who is here drawing a line in the sand with me this morning that it is enough? If you are not tired of where you are, where you are is tired of you. Let there be order. And the next thing we see, and I want you to watch this throughout this message. Auntie Titi, whenever I, God says something, watch what he does next. Because if I say, it is time to travel, and I hand you a ticket, and you look, and it says British Airways, it means you are traveling by means of a British Airways plane, right? You get what I'm trying to say. So whenever God says something, watch what he does next. 
So he says, let there be order. And then they now say, let us create man. What do you think that means in our own image? And after our own likeness, it means the instrument of order, the executor of order, the one that will bring order will be what? Man. But pause. Before man, he says, we must prepare a place for man. We must prepare equipment for man. We must make sure that man has all he needs to enforce order. Man will not just enforce order with some, without some certain things. Then we see the Elohim back up and begin to do something. And they start creation. They say, let there be light. A great light for the day and one for the night. Let them be for times and seasons. They begin to create. And you see, everything that is created is for man. Man came, saw the greatness of the things that God created after he fell and began to worship some of them. But that sun was just man's odomapige in the sky. Okay, before you call me elitist, his timex in the sky. Okay, his timex in the sky. It was just his timepiece. He says, let the sun and moon be for times and seasons. It means everything that was created was created for you. You are not getting it. The way you know you've conceived and immediately you begin to buy baby clothes. You begin to create a nursery. God says, I've conceived a creature who will be in my image. He's going to need an environment. He's going to need some tools of operation. And he began to create the tools of operation. The sun for times and for seasons. I will pause here and give you an example. So some people understand how the sun is used. And because the gifts and callings of God, I will first pass on here, is they are without repentance. Till now, they use the sun to cut your own life. And to set times for your own life. They speak to the son and tell the son what to do. And then because a psalmist who is a king understands it, they say, the son shall not smite me by day, nor the moon by night. Was the son meant for smiting? He knew that some people had spoken to the son and said, as for that one, when you rise, smite him. The Bible says in Psalm 19, Says the heavens are telling of the glory of the Lord and the firmament declareth his handiwork. Some people understand that the sky speaks. The sun speaks. Look at you. What you don't know can make you suffer. And God is restoring these mysteries. It's not there in your Bible. That's why I said anything I say, you put up the scripture. Because I don't want anybody to think I'm making it up as I go along. It's in the word of God. The heavens are speaking. Not everything that speaks needs to have a mouth. Not everything that hears has an air. Jesus spoke to the fig tree. Today you will speak to everything that has not been delivering in your life. So they sent man after creating the environment for man. Why? Because man was to be the executor of order, the restorer of order. Man was meant to be, Pastor Emo, the king of the earth. The king of the earth. If you do not know the reason for something, abuse is inevitable. That's what Miles Moreau said. So if you're hearing, we're kings, we're kings, you might get it wrong. Kings have an assignment. The first thing a king must have is territory. Can you write that down? You are not a king without territory. I like that. So we come to church now and we're just like, well, let them perform. We'll be watching. Can we write down territory? Asana Murenike, good to see you. Kings must have territory. So when you begin to say, I'm a king, I'm a king. Pause. Self-awareness is good. A king of what? What do I superintend over? First, it can be your family. It's all right. But when you begin to understand that you're a king, immediately it strikes you that your platform should be larger. And your platform does not become larger by demanding it. It comes bigger, larger, by being faithful with what you have. You are given a family, you superintend the family so well, God says, take an estate association. You do so well in the estate association, they say, why not local government chairman? You don't get it. But you start with mastering yourself. 
So let's not pretend and say we're kings when we're king over nothing. You're not even the class prefect. You will grow into kingship. You are not yet there. But your potential is kingship. Kings have territory. And that is why, sir, God sent us from heaven to earth. The very fact that you are on earth is a signal, a sign of your greatness. Let me explain. If you are meant not to be a king, God will keep you in heaven. The reason why he had to send you here, Morenike, is because two kings cannot live in the same domain. Somebody will get it. So because God so fatty had to be a king, the first thing is you must live here. Let me use the Oba of Benin for you. The day the Oba of Benin becomes Oba. Who is from Edo State here? I will not talk about broomsticks. I will not talk about anything. You are from Edo. You are a Benin person. You understand what I'm saying? Thank you. What happens? The Edo Ikan of Uselu cannot see him again. Two kings cannot be in the same territory. Do you get? Therefore, Pastor Ni cannot be in heaven. He must come to earth. There was a time when the son of a king of Spain, in one word, a prince, got restless. Okay? He wanted more territories. The father said, you can't be king till I die. And I'm not dying now for you. You know? I remember one woman who said that to her son. I will not say his name begins with C. I'm not dying. I will clock 90. What will we do now? You will wait, no, no. So the king now said, you know what you could do though? We have territories, we have colonies with no king. So he sent him to South America and made him king of one of the colonies. You are here as the king of a colony of heaven. Where you live, your sphere is an embassy. It will strike you. If it is an embassy, then the home country must defend you. If it is an embassy, the home country must provide for you. You don't understand. I tell my people in the diaspora, the difference between a refugee, an immigrant, and an ambassador is who sent them. Who sent them? The ambassador comes from your same worst stricken country, but he's feeding well. You are a refugee from that country. They're chasing you from pillar to post. The difference is who sent you. Because people are looking and saying, my life is so far from what she is describing. It is because today is a day of consecration. When you decide, you know what? Enough of me chasing my own agenda. If you made me king, I want to find out why. Why? What is my mandate? What am I meant to do? Over what do I rule? Over what do I rule? The king has territory. I just spoke now. The king has responsibility and accountability. So, the responsibility and accountability is over a people group and a territory. We have, in our case, our territory is not ours. We are stewards of the territory. The Bible says in Psalm 115 verse 16, The heavens, the heavens of heavens belong to God, but the earth he has given to the children of men. But it's a lease. It's a lease. So, how you steward this level of your operation the time is how it takes you to the next and to the next so i'm saying you don't have to move you don't have to do anything you have to do a mental and internal adjustment where you are that you know what i'm not sending myself anymore send me when naomi sent herself to moab look at what happened to her when god sent her back to bethlehem look at what happened to her Kingdom people do not move because of bread. We don't take jobs because it's a promotion. There's money. Because when you get there because of the money, you must keep yourself there with that money. Because God did not send you. You sent yourself. Cash sent you. Your bank account sent you. Then your bank account must back you up. But if it is God that sent you, I want to see that supervisor that will tell you that uh, you are leaving. You don't understand. People live for me. Because the ark of God cannot stand in the temple of Dagon and Dagon will be standing. It falls face down. You must know what you carry. If you don't know what you carry, know who carries you. Hey! My altar is calling you, oh Lord. 
my altar is calling you, O Lord, take my praise, O Lord, take my praise. I want to give you a minute to consecrate yourself to God. Let the fire from your altar purge my body. I've gone my way for a long time. I met a young girl in Abuja. And then she came and she, she said, I want to be like you. I'm an architect too. And I could tell immediately what was going on. I stand as a testament Aye. that it works. Aye. Young girl, don't let anybody tell you different. It works. I'm giving you something in return for something. It's not about the Lord is in this relationship. Marriage is for destiny. Marriage is not a ticket out of poverty. Marriage is not a meal ticket. Whichever way. Either I want to marry the daughter of a governor. Or I want to marry the son of a senator. Marriage is not a career path. It's not a business improvement method. Do you still love me? Yeah, I love you. You can tell your neighbor she's, she's, not, she's talking to you, not me. So he created man and I said, territory. I said, responsibility. Did I say accountability? Good. Because at the, then after that, when you take on those three, it gives you authority. It's the way it works. Have you seen the coronation of a king? First, the king comes and swears to do some things. He vows. After he vows to do those things on behalf of the people. Right? Then they say, here is the crown. Not before. And after that, they now say, we now make you commander in chief of what? Armed forces. If you're a king, you have armed forces. I will start giving you examples. I want to first lay the background. Things that I know of. If you're a king, you have armed forces. So Jesus came as a pattern of a king. And showed us clearly the way it is done. In John 14, 7 to verse 9. You can read it at home. He was saying that whosoever has seen me has seen the Father. Philip said, show us the Father. And that suffices. He said, if you have seen me, you've seen the Father. He came so that we will stop wondering about the nature of God. If you see anything that Jesus did, then you know that that is what you are meant to do, number one. If you see any problem Jesus solved, then you know that is a problem you are meant to solve. Then you know that's a problem he wants to solve for you. Nobody can ever tell you Jesus does not want you healed. That is teaching you a lesson. Why? Because every sick person that he came across, he healed them. Even if you saw a dead person and it was not on his agenda for the day, he raised them. Therefore, he does not want premature death. He's not teaching you anything. Does it happen? It does. Why? Because we know in parts. We prophesy in parts. We're growing. Do you understand? But is that the perfect will of God? No. Will he use it? Yes. Is it his perfect will? No. So Jesus came. And when he ended his journey, I'm going somewhere. He said, it is finished. <laughs> it is finished. It is finished. The God has spoken. It is so. So wipe the tears from your eyes. There's healing for your pain. Grace has spoken. It is so. It is done. It is done. It is done. I want you to understand that it is done. I want you to know that God has said to Jesus, sit down. That means he's not doing anything anymore. Apart from interceding for us. Do you get what I'm saying? Nothing extra. He is not coming again to continue the work. He's coming for a victorious church. I'm letting you know that the baton has passed to you. I'm letting you know that if you are waiting for an earthquake to let you know that your circumstances has changed. No, you will act today. He said, it is finished. I have done what I should do. Jehovah said to my Lord, sit down at my right hand. Until I make your enemies your footstool. 
How? Because they're kings in this present house. Thou shalt send the rod of thy strength out of Zion. Rule thou in the midst of your enemies. That's why you can't be waiting for the entire Nigeria to change. You will change it. He said, rule in the midst of your enemies. You can't pray to kill all your enemies. They are necessary for your rulership. He laid a table before me in the presence of my enemies. They are your audience. So why is your heart palpitating? Because you are surrounded by enemies. When the enemies begin to gather, Pastor Babo, that means the show is about to begin. The show is about to begin. Look at them gathering, taking rig side seats. Hey! Grace has spoken. It is so. The word, it is finished. That word is one word. Tetelestai. It is in three realms. In the business realm, the receipt is paid in full. That means there is nothing again to go. You have to move now. It is now your turn. You have to act. Nothing, nothing can be done again that Jesus has not done for you. Two, it is a military term. Meaning a battle was actually fought and won. Which is why I tell people don't waste grace. You say, oh, some treasures meetings are free. I say they're not free. Somebody paid for them. We did, but you can come without paying. Don't waste grace. Do you get it? Don't waste grace. Somebody fought a battle. That battle that you think you have to fight all over again, somebody fought it. But you know what? You have to show up now to receive the victory. And I will tell you why you have to show up very quickly. Three, it was also a judicial term, which means there was a sentence for a crime. But the sentence has been fully served. Ah, if you have a 20-year jail sentence, and after 20 years, you serve it. And they say, the warden gives you your clothes and says, you can now go. Would you say, no, I'm feeling guilty. I think I should stay some more. Number one, the state to say, it looks like you don't have food in your house, uncle. Or you have a problem with rent money. Because it might be like a prison in Sweden or somewhere where you know it's even better than your house. And you're like, let me stay here. So you have to move now. We need space for other criminals. You need to go. So it is finished. I said the battle is won, but you must show up. You know, I said, I'll give you a human example now. I said, kings have a territory. They have responsibility. They have accountability. Then they have armed forces. Did I not say so? I'm talking about you. I'm just describing you. You have territory, responsibility. To who? To those God who has a covenant with, to the assignment that God has given to you to do. Then you will have armed forces when you do what you are meant to do. Not when you don't do what you are meant to do. Why? Because the armed forces you have, are oh, they're the ones who hear go and don't hear come. You don't get. They do only what he commands. They are not moved by your tears. You have to understand the nature of angels. And they don't have mercy either. Yeah. They don't have empathy for human beings. Because they're not human. Are you getting it now? Look, God is your discovery. Try and understand. You cannot create a God in your own image. He is who he is. Discover him. His angels don't have mercy. If they say strike 185,000 people dead, they slaughter them. If it is a human being, halfway I will stop oh, that this blood is plenty. Yes. That yes, they, might, they are my enemies, but ah uh ah. -uh. But, but not angels. So in the book of Joshua chapter 10, we we'll start from verse 5. Write it down. When you get home, you see it. And when I preach, I, I write books. We see the Gibeonites went to war. So, or rather, the king of Jerusalem was attacking the Gibeonites because they had formed a treaty with Joshua. Joshua had been deceived into the treaty. But regardless, covenant is covenant. Huh? He will say that she's my wife, but I don't love her anymore. She deceived me. I thought she was fine, but when she took off her makeup on the first day of the honeymoon, this is not what I married. 911, there's a strange woman in my bed. Who is she? She doesn't have hair. The one I married had hair. You know, the one I married had cheekbones. Hello, guys, it's called concealer. 
So you see, there is no I was deceived into it. You enter a covenant, you enter a covenant. That's why you do not enter a covenant lightly. Did you get that? Lightly. I can't go into long stories. I'm not talking about marriage. I'm talking about covenant, including business. Therefore, he entered this covenant. They were in trouble and they said, come, protect us while you are our king. We pledge alliance to you. So he got there. He, first thing, he asked God, should I go? Kings, do you ask God, should I go? You say, no, the business is working. What's the name? MMM. <laughs> ah, it's a hot opportunity. What's it called? FTX. <laughs> Not one question, should I do it? Everybody is doing it. What is Bitcoin? What is Ethereum? What I'm mining NFT. What? Do you mine NFT or NFT? You understand? I'm mining whatever. <laughs> Should I go? And he went. When he went, God said, I will fight with you. If God says you should go, God will fight with you. Then why don't you just sit at home and God fights? Because we are fighting this morning. Because of the law of territory. It is illegal when God has given the earth to man for God to intervene into the realm of man without man's invitation. Do you get? Somebody's getting it. Clap for the young people getting it. If you get it, it's okay. Sometimes the old people, is too late. Mm. Let them just make heaven. And you know, that's another thing. I want to make heaven. Make heaven is a given. Making earth is the real assignment. Yes. It sounds holy and everything. But if you are meant to make heaven, you know what to do now. Go now. Everybody wants to make heaven. Nobody wants to die. So, Joshua went to fight this battle. When he got there, the Bible says first the Lord confused them. They didn't even have strategy anymore. As if it was not bad enough, he began to throw hailstones at the enemy. This is the armed forces at work. Please know that God himself on his throne didn't do it. His emissaries, kings don't. Have you ever seen a king say, execute him, then he begins to sharpen his knife? No! The people he has told to execute know what to do. Are you with me? They began to throw hailstones. So, Sister AJ, why now? Why did Joshua have to show up? Because Joshua is the one who has the legal authority to operate on earth. God had to use Joshua. You had to see a front. Like in Georges chapter 6 verse 34. It says, and the spirit of the Lord put on Gideon. The spirit of the Lord could not fight by himself. He needed a vessel. Ah! I've been offered to a deity and now I am a sacrifice. The life that I live is not my own. I've been offered to a deity and now I am a sacrifice. The life that I live is not my own. Spirit consume, consume, consume me more and more. As I consume, consume, consume you more and more. I've been offered to a deity. <laughs> Paul said, the life that I now live, <laughs> I live by faith. You don't get it. We are meant to be living vessels, living portals where God can bring incursions yes. into the environments we find ourselves in. There's a problem in that bank. He looks and he says, I have Nigel there. He says, who do we have? And he said, Debola is there. And he says, we're, we're good. There is an ark. Because power will go out of her. And do what must be done. Rolake, that's why we're kings and priests. The priest will download. The king will go and execute. All within one vessel. No gap. Joshua the priest said, should I go? God said, go. Joshua the king took his sword. Today as you're hearing this word, you rise up as a king. And you begin to pray and execute in your life. Some people will get the message. I'm not saying to everybody. It's okay. Eh. 
Some people are waiting for somebody to come and shake them in their chair. The Bible says, God controls everything by the word of his power. You don't understand that one day is usually called today. Then you just decide, you know what? It's enough. <laughs> and that is how. Remember the story of Joshua we are on. You are seeing the priest in operation, the king in operation. You are seeing the armed forces, right? And as he was executing vengeance on the enemies of God, the sun wanted to go down. And he said, no, we can't go down. Why? We are masters of the earth as kings. Because when he says in Genesis chapter 1 verse 26, let them have dominion. It means in the Hebrew, let them master the earth. Let them play it like someone will play a guitar. Master it like a keyboard, like a surgeon with a scalpel. Let them know what to do at every time with the dust, with the stars, with the sun, with the moon, with the waters. And Joshua said, because I'm executing God's counsel. Sun, stand still. Moon, stand. And the angels who are in charge of such elements ground everything to a halt. Hey. Oh. Miracle Jesus said, let us go to the other side. I'm talking now about when you see God controlling the elements. When the king and the priest came to the earth to show us how it is done. In Mark 4, 39, it says, let us go to the other side. And verse 35, and then the Bible says, a wind and a wave arose. You don't get. Then he got up and he rebuked the wind. Rebuked. And the sea stopped. Man of God, young man, young woman, I want you to know. That that troubled sea you are seeing, something is instigating it. Jesus rebuked the wind before the waves stopped. So you see the waves. You see a sack letter, but there is something behind it. You see a wayward man. The Bible says, henceforth know we no man after the flesh. And you don't know that you are dealing with ancestral issues in the life of this man. The good he wants to do, he cannot do. That's a word for somebody here. The good he wants to do and you keep getting angry and angry with him. And the disciples said, who is this man? That even the winds and the waves obey him. He's a king. This is how you should be operating. I have witnesses here. We were at All Houston, 2023. And they brought the weather forecast. For the next day. First it rained like rain wanted to finish on Friday. Then on Saturday it was supposed to be worse. 99% precipitation. Then I got up and I said. If it be that God sent me here. And he did. One servant does not block another servant. You rain. You are a servant of God. I here. I'm under authority a servant of God. Stop. There must be no rain. We woke up the next Saturday, the day of the program, a beautiful, beautiful sunrise. Not one drop of rain. Not because I wanted to have a party. Yeah, but not because I wanted to have a party. Are you getting me? Kings bring deliverance. I want to move quickly. What was Joshua bringing? It was deliverance. Save us! Who have you saved recently? It's been about your pocket, your pocket, and your pocket, which is good because, I mean, you cannot help the poor by being one of them. Oh, you have to sort yourself out first. Now. I agree, but it's enough. Hmm. The Bible says that the centurion came to the king and praised Jesus and said my servant lies at home ill and he says speak the word only because I am the man under authority see I too have armed forces 
I say to one, go, and he goes. Come, and he comes. Pastor King said, I didn't used to understand it for a long time. It was things that happened in my life that made me understand. I just knew he spoke the word. Maybe it's Jesus, and he was healed. The technology by which the servant was healed, I didn't get it. Until some things began to happen to me. Until people would say, this morning it still happened. Somebody said, you had us praying about somebody in South Africa. She said, I saw you come on Friday. And tell me, everything is going to be okay. They've moved my word. Ah! I'm in Lagos. I'm not in Joburg. I know who appeared on Friday. Because they appear regularly. They are my armed forces. Someone said in Houston, the day after the summit, you came into my room and you were conducting deliverance and I was vomiting. When she finished, her life changed. Her job changed. Everything around her changed. Where was I? I was in my hotel. It's my armed forces. If they come in a way that they are, you will not allow them into your room. So they come in a familiar way. In a way that you trust. Using a face that you trust. Kings have armed forces. Instead of being intimidated by the stories I'm telling you, I want you to step up. Because I'm a mere woman, remember. Can't you see? Can you not see my face? If God can use me. I remember being in a church. They cover their head there. They wear a total neck. The woman got so upset after a while, like because of everything that was happening. The whole place was scattering, people were falling. Pastor Ju, she went, when one girl was falling, when I got near, she went, mm. I said, It's okay, I understand. I knew what she was thinking. It's like, God, you look for who to use, finish. You can't find, look at who you are using. Look at me here. What have I not done that you think, ah, but let me get back very quickly? We were in a church, you were there. I saw a woman fall forward. She was wearing orange. And I thought, oh, you know, manifestations of the spirit and all that. But I noticed that people with white t-shirts gathered around her, Pastor Fumi, and they took her away. Then after a while, I saw them do this. And I thought, eh, it's still okay, right? Then the Holy Spirit said, shout Jesus three times. I told them, we're going to shout Jesus three times. And they shouted the first time, the second time, the third time. That's all. And I saw commotion at the back. No more. Later I found out that the woman died in the middle of the service. For real, it's in Lagos. I just want to mention the name of the church. She died. By now, you won't invite me because you'd have heard that when she goes to preach, people die. So, <laughs> she died. They did everything to bring her back. She couldn't come out. There were doctors there. When they stopped and left her, that's when I saw them do this. And when we shouted, Jesus, about the second or the third shout, she sneezed and she came back to life. Now listen, I didn't move near her. Who went? Armed forces. So when Jesus said to the centurion, he is fine. He knew that those who will make sure he's fine because I said so, they're on their way. Whatever you bind, because we're going to have 10 minutes to pray. I have 12 minutes and 32 seconds left. Must be bound. If it has been bound in heaven. Do you realize it now? I was in Zambia. She was there. I have never seen anything like that. The, <laughs> this girl's eyes bulge to the point that it's not physically possible. I've watched, I watched the movie Exorcist as a child. They did not get that effect. So, you know, feeling cool. I thought, you see now, it's because I'm carrying the power of God. She, I saw she was looking beyond my shoulder. It wasn't me. It was armed forces screaming in terror because of what she could see that the rest of you would not see. Ka! Put your hand on your chest. You want to prophesy to yourself. Darika, Tule, brother. Jesus said in John 12, 31, now is the priest of this world judged. That means every illegal occupant of your body and of your system. It is time for them to be evicted. The Bible says foreigners shall hear my voice and come trembling out of their close places. And people that I have not known will serve me. When they hear of me, they will obey me. 
Rebako soto bakaya baba bakata kata kata kata. Spirit consume, consume. <laughs> I want you to rise up. It's time to pray. It's time to pray. I'm telling you what kings do. They deliver. What kings do. They heal. What kings do. There is more. They can't be poor. Why? Not because of them, but because of the number of people that eat at their table. One of our young men, he was in serious trouble in the UK. Thank God I have witnesses. He was in the middle of COVID and his business was about to collapse because he needed an injection of serious amount of millions of pounds. He came to Nigeria, someone said, by acts of the Holy Spirit. So he read it and the Holy Spirit said, go and watch interestingly her message in this present house i said she listened to he listened to it it was all government government in nigeria what is all this then it was time this is not what is doing me i need money in 48 hours then he said he got to a place that i said us us the earth is the lord and the fullness thereof the world and those who dwell therein earth yield to me your strength and he commanded the earth, you to me your strength. And one of his mentors who has said, I'm not getting involved in this project, called him and said, I will do it. No terms, no conditions, millions of pounds. Speak to the earth, 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 earth. Hear you the voice of the Lord. You to me your strength, come on. The earth says, I have been asleep for a long time. Hey, hey hello, listen to me. The earth says, I'm not used to your voice. You don't usually speak to me. Others speak to me. They take the dust. Because they know that Titi was created out of the dust. Kemi was created out of the dust. Therefore, the affinity of man's DNA with dust is so heavy. And they speak to the dust. Look at them. You all watch those movies. They're looking like, hello, is our Netflix? And they tell the dust. Wherever Okechuku is on the face of this earth, unless he does not touch the ground, this is what we want you to do with him. That is the negative side. You know why they can continue to do that? Because man was made a master of the earth and the gifts and callings of God are without repentance. However, the Bible says in Romans chapter 8 verse 19 that the very expectation of the creature the creation is groaning that one day you will talk. One day you will deliver us. One day you will put us to proper use. One day you will free us from this abuse. One day you will free us by being told uh, by the demons in the demoniac to go after the Lord of the whole earth as he's traveling over the water. This is not what I want to do is what the river is saying. This is not what I want to do is what the earth is saying. The earth is saying you are not giving me any instruction. You are quiet. And today you want to talk. You are whispering. Earth, earth, earth. Hello earth. Are you the earth? <laughs> Even Angel Gabriel is saying, can you hear her accent? <laughs> God says I can't hear, can you? <laughs> Jeremiah 20, 29. I want to give you a scripture that shows it being done because we want to pray now. Jeremiah 22, 22, 29. Jeremiah 23 says, Earth, O earth, O earth, hear ye the voice of the Lord. Write this man, Coniah, childless, a wicked king. You don't understand. There are things you can do at the, about the politics of this country. Write this man, Kunaya, childless. This is Jeremiah, a prophet. Are you comfortable now? Can you now pray? Yes. A man who shall not prosper in his days. It was so serious, this scripture, that Jesus had to come as a king, also using the lineage of Mary. That's why when you look in the Bible, you see two genealogies for Jesus. Because the David lineage was cut off at Kunaya. So he had to use his mother's own. Ah! When Jeremiah said it, it was forever. Are you there? You want to speak to the earth. Yield to me your strength. Talk to it. There's nothing you need that is not in the earth. The Bible says in Exodus chapter 5 verse 9. 
He said the profit of the earth is for all. Even the king is fed by the field. <laughs> there is nothing, there is no one like you, Awi Maya. There is nothing, there is no one like you. There is nothing. Why are you talking to the earth? A young man says, I need a car. Oh yes, the metal that creates the car, the iron ore is brought from the earth. That's why he says, the earth is the Lord. There is more to the earth than you can see. There is a fullness thereof. Everything you need is there locked up. And you are there saying the country is hard. Look at Ecclesiastes chapter 5 verse 9. The country is not hard. He says, the profit of the earth is for all. The king is fed by the field. Why are you not being fed by the field? You want to talk to the earth. You want to talk to the field. Yield to me your strength. Yield to me your strength. There is nothing. There is nothing. There is no one like you at Oparati. There is nothing. There is no one like you. Hallelujah. Let's be honest. People go and do all of, all kinds of things with the earth. You are going to speak to the earth that when it concerns you and your family, it does not accept that kind of rubbish anymore. Do you accept? Do you understand? They spill blood. They do all sorts of things. Jeremiah 16, 16 says, Afterward, I will send for many hunters and they will hunt them out. And then I will send for many fishers. They will fish them out. They will fish them from every hole of the rock. Every, which means every part of the earth where they might have buried something saying Nigel must not prosper. This morning, they will vomit it out. You are going to say to the earth, 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 hear ye the voice of the Lord. Vomit out every token, every sacrifice. There is nothing. There is nothing, there is no one like you. There is nothing, there is no one like you. There is nothing, there is no one like you. There is nothing, there is no one like you. There is nothing. Obadiah 4 says, Though you make your nest in the stars, from thence shall I cast you down, says the Lord. You don't understand why people use these things. The stars come up and they begin to influence the affairs of men on earth. And some know, and they master the earth because you will not do it. Though you are a king, you will not do it. Therefore they speak and make their nest in the stars. Unless Orion does not come out. Unless Pleiades does not come out. Are you understanding it? Then the astrologers will begin to say when Mercury has this position with this. They know what they are saying. You are going to say no more. Though you make your next among the stars. And you'll be monitoring and guiding me. From there, I cast you down this morning. Come and open your mouth. Oh, oh, oh. Point. 
Genesis 27, 27, 27 says, See the smell of my son. It's like a smell of a field which the Lord has blessed. I will see some people coming out as I sit at the back and I said, the smell is the problem. Ah! The smell is the problem. Brother, can I know what I'm saying? The smell is the problem. There's a smell that you carry that people find you irresistible. Yes, yes. They'll pass over many others and keep looking for you. I remember I said this in all London. Who was there? Cassie. I said, God wants to favor the men in this room. Why? Yes. There is an attack against Christian men. Just yes. know it. Yes. There is an attack against men being the heads of their family and providers. The women are, you know, picking up. And many don't know how to handle it. They don't understand that you can be a tiger in the office and be a kitten when you get home. Because there cannot be two heads in a boat. I'm a woman under authority. I've been married for 29 years. So you want to understand it. There is a wisdom. This is the last prayer point. I said, God wants to favor the men in this world. And as I said, the man did a cartwheel. You know, there's some kind of fakes you can't do because you can't go back. Go back to Dallas, Texas. The first thing that happened was a recruiter reached out to him. Seven times he had tried to get into Google. There was no way. This time, Google came for him. Not only did they come, they changed the job description to suit his skill set. Are you ready? Yes, sir. This time. Look, favor is sometimes, it's almost like a weight. You can feel something. Wait, in South Africa, this young girl said, I was one of those they carried to the front. It's not a one-hour service, we do those kind of things. She said, the kind of favor that came upon me, people of my color don't have it. Something shifted in the atmosphere. Are you ready? You are going to say, Father, hey, hey, change my smell, please. That is very simple. Let my smell be like the smell of a field which the Lord has blessed. I'm done. That's it. My smell must be like the smell of a field which the Lord has blessed. Oh, my help has come. My help has come. Oh, 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 my help has come. My help has come. to give a great shout as I live at which every knee shall bow and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord put your hand on your chest I'm leaving now I'm not extending it <laughs> I want you to do this with understanding we're going to shout Jesus one loud shout of Jesus some people will get home watch out for it and you begin to have visitations you, in your dream. Hmm. Higher by here, under your anointing. I abide under your control. I'm going to count to three. Yes, the drama is ready. You are in the spirit. And we are going to shout Jesus. Bear in mind what must never be seen in your life again. Be determined. He said, I have set my face as a flint. You are a king. Now this is the real meaning of king. Reigning. The word of authority is in the mouth of a king. And his mouth does not transgress in judgment. Are you ready? Are you ready? Are you ready? One, two, three. Jesus! Begin to say everything. 
thing that does not believe in the night begin to live. Shall the proud be taken from the mighty? All the lawful captives set free. The prey of the terrible shall be delivered. The captive of the mighty shall be set free. God says it is time to contend with those who contend with you and to deliver you.